Coming up on this episode of Design to the Nines, I am taking a boring builder grade chandelier and I'm upgrading it with a little bit of bling and a little bit of glam and I'm doing it on a budget. So if that sounds good to you, stay tuned. Welcome to Design to the Nines. I'm Natalie Callahan, and if this is the first time we're meeting, welcome. And I would ask you to consider subscribing to my channel below if you are interested in DIY, interior design, and really all things home related because I post weekly tutorials that you're not gonna wanna miss on all of these topics. And so I just would love it if you joined and it would just make things so much better. I know I say this probably every week, but I'm really excited about this week's DIY because we are going to be making over my chandelier and it is something that I've been wanting to do for a while now because, well, we live in a master plan community and there are probably hundreds of homes with this exact same chandelier and so I want something a little bit different. I like to design things to the nines and that's what we're gonna do with the chandelier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dress it up without touching it, without, well, we gotta touch it. <laughs> but we're not gonna move it. And so um, we're gonna leave it right where it is. And this is something that you can totally do. If you don't like the finish on yours, you could use chalk paint or paint it in place. There are some simple electrical projects that I'm comfortable doing around the house, but I recognize that not everybody's comfortable playing with electrical for obvious reasons. So if that's something that you want to learn more about, let me know in the comment section below because I can teach you some simple things to do around your home. I'm not an electrician, I'm just a handy DIYer, so just keep that in mind. So, but we're gonna leave this one alone. Um, so this is something that you can do even if you're not comfortable with electrical. And so anyone can do this. And we are gonna take it from build a grade boring to super glam by adding crystals and beads and making it a little bit more special. And so let's get started. Because we're gonna be using some E6000 and because I want good access to the chandelier, the first thing that we're gonna do is move the table and chairs completely out of the way so we can have full access to our chandelier. All right, so I've moved the table out of the way and we are ready to kind of disassemble the chandelier as well as clean it thoroughly. Keep in mind, it's still connected to electricity, so you just wanna keep that in mind when you're cleaning it. Just be careful and not get it too wet. But I'm a little, I'm a little scared to take off the, the shades because I know that creepy crawlies always find their way into light fixtures, and I'm a little nervous to discover what's there. So, ugh, let's see. Let's look. All right. So while I was cleaning my chandelier, you can see that all of these are firmly attached to the bottom, except for this one. So I don't know what happened here, but we're gonna repair that. I'm gonna just use a little E6000 and glue that down. Okay, so don't panic. I'm standing on a stool. I'm not normally this tall. Wouldn't that be nice though? As you will know, this chandelier was not built to have crystals or beads or anything on it, so how are we gonna attach it? So, um, rather than drill in it or do anything weird, I am breaking out my trusty E6000. You know if you're a DIYer or a crafter, this glue is like the bomb, love it. Okay, so we're gonna glue some of these split rings, it's jewelry, I don't know if you can see that. And I'll put all of the supplies that I'm using in the description box below for your ease and convenience. But I'm gonna use these because then I it will allow just enough of a hole to hook things to, beads and everything, but without being like overbearing or huge. Now, rather than putting the glue directly on it and just putting a big glob of glue in it, I'm gonna actually put, just squeeze some in my container here and then I'll just very gently dip the ring in and then we're just going to glue it where we want our beads so now i'm going to do beads from here to here and i think i'm going to do some from here to here and i'm contemplating 
doing it here. So we'll just kind of see how it goes and see how much bling I end up adding. All right, so let's get these glued on because it needs to dry at least overnight, preferably 24 hours before you hang anything from it. So one of the things you wanna keep in mind when you're stick gluing on these rings that you're gonna attach your beads to is what direction you want your beads to run. So this ring is gonna attach to the other ring. So you're gonna wanna make sure that it sits wide so that when you attach it, it will sit correctly. So just keep that in mind. You're gonna wanna be a little patient with this part because you have to hold it in place for a little bit. Also keep a rag handy because um, it's gonna get your fingers all kind of sticky and a little bit messy, but it's actually very pretty and matches the finish really nicely. So we're just dipping it Well, that's kind of weird. Do not use a styrofoam container for the E6000. It eats right through it. I just learned that. I've never had that happen before. Okay, so as you can see, I've attached rings to strategic locations to support my beads. This was probably the most time consuming part because I had to hold them in place a minute or two while they set up. And now I'm going to give it 24 hours to dry and cure so they can support weight. And as you can see, I've taped off that one arm as I've glued it down. So I've let my jewelry hooks dry overnight and they are ready to go and the fun is about to begin. So I bought a whole bunch of beads and crystals. So I'm going to start by hanging these beads from my hooks. And I think I'm going to start by doing it from here to here and we're going to have so much fun. So what I've done is I count, I kind of held it up to see how much beads I'd need and I counted about 15 and what we're going to do is this kind of like a keychain so it's just going to thread on there like so. So we'll just start that and there we got it on that one. That went on quicker than I thought. And then we'll do the same on the hook on the inside of this. Ooh, this is pretty, isn't it? Okay, we'll get that on there. First one done. What do you think? So pretty. I love it. So we'll just go all the way around. Okay, so now I'm going to do kind of the same thing, but on the underside. So it's gonna follow the curve of this. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I've connected it all the way down this way, and now I want to drape some this way. So connecting from here to here. I'm loving this project. What do you think so far? Do you think this is something you can do? I'm very confident that you can. Okay, so while I'm waiting for some crystals to be delivered from Amazon, I'm waiting, they should be here any second, I wanted to show you what I need to do to the light fixture, the light part itself. This was built for a glass shade that you weren't really supposed to see the light bulb, but I wanted to switch to it to be a mini drum shade because I found these on Amazon and thought they were so adorable. But you can see when I put in the light bulb and put this on, it doesn't look horrible, but it's a little squatty and it's not really the way it's supposed to look. So I got this light socket extender and you just screw it in like a light bulb and that's gonna give us about another inch and a half to two inches of height, which is perfect. And then you just screw your light bulb on top of that. And then you put your lampshade and boom, that's a much better height. However, that's not very attractive and that doesn't do anything for our beautiful glam chandelier. This would be easy if you have a skinny light fixture, but this is not a skinny light fixture. Um, it's a standard bulb width. So I wrapped my brain of what to do to cover this. I considered PVC pipe. There was some, also some other plumbing pipe that was silver that I thought might work, but I'm like, that's really hard and it was kind of expensive. So you'll love my result. Hold on one second. 
What I ultimately decided on is I had some paper towel holders that were not being used. And so I decided to cut them down and I covered them in white contact paper. And I think it's gonna work because our wattage of bulbs is really low and it doesn't actually touch them. So what we're gonna do is just slide those over to hide all of that ugly. And it looks more like a candle, don't you think? And then we'll just put our lampshade on and boom, so much more attractive, don't you think? It's so cute and I'm not even done. I'm still waiting for my dangly crystals, but I think I'm in love. All right, I got my crystals. They're so pretty. So we're gonna just finish this out. My chandelier is done. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I'm not quite sure that it's gonna translate well on camera. I hope that it does because it is so pretty in person. It is a massive transformation from builder grade boring to something a little bit more glamorous, a little bit prettier, and definitely more personality. The biggest takeaway I hope you take from this is to be bold and brave in your decorating. Think outside of the box. Don't settle for less than what you want. And honestly, the worst thing that could have happened is yes, I would have had to buy a new light fixture if this went wrong. Maybe. <laughs> and you know, that wouldn't be awesome, but I didn't really like what was there before anyways. The best thing that could happen is that I have a result that I'm super happy with. I love how this looks now, and I saved money doing it. If you consider having to hire an electrician, buying a whole new light fixture, you know, it would be several hundred dollars for that, and then you get the electrician. So what we did was we saved money and I'm kind of proud of myself. And that is exactly what I want to teach you how to do each and every week is to be brave in your decorating. And, and it really feels good to do something yourself, make something beautiful, be creative. It's awesome. So that leads me to a question I have for you. What is your biggest fear in DIY or decorating? Let me know in the comment section below because I want to help you solve that fear. Let's tackle it together. Okay, so I have another project for you to use with your leftover beads from this project. It costs about $3 and it's over on my IGTV channel. Here's a little sneak peek of what we've got going. So pretty. And we're just using the leftovers from this project. Now I've been having a little bit of issues with IGTV. So if you don't see my videos there, you can pop on over to my Facebook group where I've shared them there as well. But hopefully we'll get the bugs worked out over at IGTV. I'm having so much fun doing those episodes as well. So make sure you come on over there to see my decorative blingy plate. So if you liked this DIY today and you want to see more things like this, hit the subscribe button below and turn the notifications on because I'm bringing you weekly tutorials with all things to do with the home and I just love it if you would join me. It just makes it better. It really does. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.